ready for it. Three weeks ago in Miami, Florida, David Ozio won the Light Beer Classic, defeating Daryl Bauer in the championship match. But that did more than just give him another title. Light Beer had offered a bonus prize of $1 million to any bowler who could win their three tournaments. $1 million if you could win the Light Classic Championship and Light Beer Open. Ozio was the only man who could claim that prize, but he failed to make the finals here in Milwaukee. There is still bonus money in sight, a $50,000 bonus. And today, five finalists have their eyes on that jackpot. In fifth place, looking for his first PBA championship, Jeff Bellinger of Columbia, South Carolina. He will take on Brian Voss, who is making his second championship round appearance in three weeks. Mark Roth won his first PBA title in 1975. He's now looking for number 33. Walter Ray Williams is a four-time World Horseshoe Pitching Champion, but he's still looking for his first professional bowling title. And our tournament leader, Don Janello, who has dominated the field this week, is only one victory away from the $27,000 first prize. As ABC Sports presents... Professional Bowlers Tour. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, these are the red carpet celebrity lanes. 27,000 of the winner today. And for the 21st year, we have come to another cradle of bowling, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And we've been sponsored by a name that has long been synonymous with television, Miller. And the light slam started three weeks ago as David Ozio won it. He did not qualify for the final 24 here, so he has a chance for the light slam, or $50,000, three weeks from today, if he or the winner today can win in Cleveland, Ohio. More about that later. Our field today, a total of 38 tour titles, 32 of which are held by one man. Four-time bowler of the year, Mark Roth. Here's my colleague, Nelson Burton, Jr., with a chat. Nelson? Thank you, Chris. Four-time bowler of the year, you're right. Mark Roth has done just about everything in professional bowling. He made a tremendous charge last night. But, Mark, all week long, the story at this bowling center is how to carry the pins. Everybody's leaving seven pins, ten pins. What's the story? How have you solved that problem? Well, last night I was trying to make good, firm shots, and I uh, was able to get the ball to flip over and carry the ten pin. Well, let's say today uh, you start off, you leave a ten, you leave a seven, and at one point during a tournament you left nine consecutive ten pins I saw in the newspaper. What are you going to do to change to make that work for you? I might move my eyes uh, on my target a little bit closer and try to get the ball to roll a little sooner, and hopefully to carry the 10. Chris, he was talking about bowling 300 today. Now he's just talking about knocking out the 10 pin. We'll know in 90 minutes who has the chance at the Miller Light Slam. Thank you. Ready to go. All right, and there you see the two men that would like to win today, along with the other three, naturally. Jeff Bellinger, 215-pounder, seated now as uh, the cover boy. Brian Voss, 27 years old, from Tacoma, Washington. Second appearance in our championship round in the U.S. Open, won by Ozio. Qualified third, but lost to Ozio. High hit. Leaves the 610 on the left lane of this championship pair. The lanes are actually numbered 63 and 64. Here's a replay. You see the high hit. Cuts through the middle, leaves the 6'10 spare. And the real story today, Chris, is the championship pair. Lane 63 hooks quite a bit more than lane 64. The players say they're going to throw hard, lop the ball on 60 throw, 63, and down and in on 64. So marking with a spare, is a pair of 5 foot 10 inch, 160 pound Brian Voss. Has been bothered with a virus since Wednesday. Um, just chatting with him, I have a feeling that uh, still sustaining a temperature. Jeff Bellinger from Columbia, South Carolina, graduate in accounting from the University of South Carolina. And the man that's looking for his first professional win bow is left <laughs> one, two, and eight. The powerful style of Jeff Bellinger Five-step delivery, very short backswing, but look at the size of those forearms, that wrist underneath the ball, the good loft out over the foul line, that shot going wide. The characteristic of the championship pair shows up right away. Boss was high on the left-hand mm -hmm. lane. Bellinger slides by on the right-hand lane. 
difficult shot out there for the players, but somebody could get very hot and shoot some big numbers. Beautifully done. We keep this match even after one frame. First television appearance this year. Since he finished second to Tom Milton last year's showboat, PBA Doubles Classic in Las Vegas. And the wrap on that right arm. It's hard to get all those muscles in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. It'll keep him in good shape and in the match. You're right, Chris. Powerful forearms. He uses all his strength. Mike Durbin, who's our statistician today, was just amazed at the carry power of Jeff Bellinger when he hits the pocket. Jeff's problem is when he gets a little wild. But if he can get the ball in the pocket, look out. Just a light hit in the 1-3, leaving the 10-pin. Watch the six pin. That's the second pin on the right-hand part of the screen. It lays, lies down in the channel, doesn't quite get up to knock out the 10. We set it at the top of the championship round. That is the key pin today. The 10 pin, if a player can carry it consistently, will be almost impossible to beat. To the right of center going for that lone pin. Big one coming back just in time. Jeff Bollinger, Columbia, South Carolina. Ross is back up. He started with a spare, now shooting in the second frame. And remember, the winner will meet Mark Roth, to be followed by Walter Ray Williams, then the tournament leader, Don Janello. So with the pressure on, we got our first strike of the initial match. Four-step delivery by Brian Boss, shoulder high backswing, good follow through, good extension. The ball drives straight through, knocking the six into the 10. And one thing you'll notice about Boss and Bellinger, they loft that ball well out over the foul line. They don't throw it out over the foul line. They lift it or loft it out over the line with their wrist action. He is smooth, isn't he? As he doubles here in the first match. Take an 11-pin lead. Coming straight at you, right down lane 63. Boss, steady head. Look at that left arm balancing the right. The good straight arm swing. The deep inside trajectory. Watch the six bump out the 10. The reason the players loft the ball that much, Chris, it delays the power, allows them to use a little more power in the pocket zone to move the 10-pin out. Right lane for Bellinger. And the one, two, ten. Eight is gone, but still an awesome split. What Jeff Bellinger has to do here is take the ball and go across the lane, get the ball over here in the two pin zone, slide the two into the ten, a split that he has shot many times before. Very easy conversion if he gets the ball over left of the two pin. So it's first open frame in our first match. And a tough break for the man who's been a PBA member for seven years. Just too much of the two pin. He drives it almost straight back. Doesn't take out the 10. Bellinger has dug himself a hole early in the going. Trails by 25 pins. And his problem is he is not close on the right-hand lane. Left-hand lane, Bellinger should do quite well on. That big loft, that swinging hook ball will work good or very good on the left-hand lane. A lot of trouble on the right. Finished fifth here last year. It's more like it, says Jeff Ballinger. So we're nearing the halfway point of our first match. 25-pin lead by Brian Voss over Jeff Ballinger. Don't go away. We'll be back. This is Mark Roth, who will meet the winner of our first match. Nearing the halfway point, Brian Boss with a 25-pin lead, a double working now, shooting in the fourth frame, first game, left of center now, he's on the right lane. And jumps now to a 35-pin lead. What an athlete, you remember when you saw him in the United States Open. He qualified third, then lost to David Ozio, 247 to 236. He can put together big numbers. 
Brian Boss, excellent style. Uh, I think the one drawback he's had up until this year is you see the first breakdown, 27,000 for first, 14,000 second, 8,500. A difference of 1,000 to the winner or loser of this match. Going back to Brian Boss, he was not very aggressive the first couple of years that he was in the championship round. He has bowled very well so far this year, and this is the best I've seen him bowl in his whole career right now. Really crossing over, but he left the 6'10". Happy with that. Gave the all-clear sign to the pins, as they often do, and there's a hit. He gets a good break where he avoids the split, leaves the 6'10 spare. He converted that in the first frame. The only thing you have to guard against on the 6'10 is a guard against the chop, as you see the fingertip grip of Brian Boss. You can take a breather now as Jeff uh, Bellinger back up doing a little uh, housekeeping on that 16-pound bowling ball. And remember, he got his first strike in the fourth, now shooting in the fifth. An important shot for Jeff Bellinger. He hasn't even been close in the first and third frames to get back in the match. He must strike on the right-hand lane. Professionals doing what they have to do so often. Earlier we asked Jeff why he was wearing the elbow support. Well, I've been bowling fairly bad the first part of the winter tour, and I've been doing a lot of practice, and then the extra games I'm putting in causes a little bit of strain on my elbow. So I started wearing the, uh, the brace to add a little bit of heat to the arm while I practice, and it's basically a little bit of preventive maintenance. Okay. And he also related to me that... Uh, he has just kind of gotten used to wearing it there, and he feels comfortable, uh, so we may see it more often in Jeff Bellinger's appearances in the championship round. Needs this strike to cut the lead of Brian Voss down to just 13 pins, six frame. He's had some of those throughout the tournament, he commented, so he will take that one, of course, saying that the elbow support keeps the heat in, and he's hot right now. Aiming for the third arrow, he must have hit the fourth or fifth arrow on this one. Look at that. Right over the fourth arrow, missed, a bowl, say, a board or so. If the board was a two-by-four, I guess you could call it. <laughs> Crosses over, gets a great break. The lead of Brian Boss, just 13 pins. Six frames, spare working. That one just went by. Said so long to the one, two, and eight. Brian Voss checking the scoreboard, and this really tightens the match up with a conversion here. It'll be just 10 pins difference between the two players. Voss going at a 215 pace, Bellinger at a 205 pace. boss who learned to bowl while his father was an officer in the army up in Alaska. His dad uh, owned a bowling center in Alaska, Anchorage, Alaska, 12-lane center. Brian said that the lane conditions are a little bit different up there. He says they were very dry lane surface. You had to throw hard and really put the power to the ball. He's made the adjustment for the pro tour down here as one of our rising stars. And then it happened. The 7-10. Words won't describe it, <laughs> hardly. An apparent good hit. Watch the ball and the action of the five pin. As the five pin normally goes straight over and knocks out the seven, it goes straight back and knocks out the eight. Brian Voss with, thought he was going to get at least a nine count, ends up with a seven-ten split and drops behind in the match. Just like that, recalling what seemed to be a comfortable 35 pin lead. And now he trails by three. We'll be back with more of the first game following this. He's wide world of sports. Olympian Evander Holyfield wants a world cruiserweight title shot. First, he must face Chisanda Moody. Plus, the first major prep race on the road to Kentucky, the Florida Derby. It's all live on ABC's Wide World of Sports, next. And uh, adding to the cruiserweight bout and the Florida Derby will be an exclusive live interview with the Commissioner of Baseball, Peter Uberoff.
with Jim Lampley as the commissioner will discuss baseball's drug issues. If you're looking at Eddie Elias, founder of the Professional Bowlers Association, in from Florida to see this event live in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Three Jeff in a Bellinger, row. Three in a row. Leads by three pins. Turkey working to make it a 13-pin lead. Now he's pumped up. 215 pounder talking to himself. Is that adrenaline moving? Look how he creeps to the line. Powerful guy. Look at the release. That good snap. The hand rotating around the ball. Now watch his reaction. He hits that light hit. Let's that powerful ball do some work. There's a determined young man right there. Jeff Bellinger. Over the seven years as a professional, he's won six and lost eight while appearing on TV. So he'd like to just move up. Fifth here in last year, ninth in 1982. Big shot here. If he strikes here, boss is in real trouble. Wobbly four. The man who failed to cash in the six previous tournaments, but today he will get a check. Watch the action of the third pin on the left-hand part of your screen. The two pin goes to the sideboard, knocks out the seven, doesn't quite get the four pin. And that's what's been stopping the players all week long. It's been the ten pin, the swishing seven ten that we saw Voss leave, or the four pin, Chris. They're around the pocket, but it's, it's difficult to sustain a string of strikes. Covering the four pin. It's a 12 pin lead by Bellinger as his opponent Voss is up 142 through the seventh and open in that frame. Now shooting in the eighth. It's getting late. critical situation guarding against sending the ball wide and what he ends up with is the four six seven all he can do is just throw the ball real hard at the four six uh four seven zone and hope to bounce a pin over into the six so two open frames now for brian voss bellinger now with a 23 pin lead voss will be shooting in the ninth must situation. Possible 2-11 if Voss can throw four strikes to finish the game. Bellinger going at a 2-14 pace. Voss must start the strikes. Picture perfect. Good match game competition. Bellinger mm -hmm. does not like the rack. And we're going back to why the pins are not carrying well this week, Chris. There's a couple of reasons. Number one, the pins weigh three pounds, six, seven, and eight ounces. But we use those all the time. Number two, and it seems to be the underlying reason, our PBA Lane Maintenance Director, Lon Marshall, has informed me that the pin deck area where the pins sit are kind of down slopes. So when the ball comes off the pine, it's a little bit airborne as it goes through the pins and you don't get the right roll and power on the pins as it travels through the pins. And so. that's not much you can do about it except a lot of loft on the ball and cut down your hook. Adjustments, adjustments, week to week. Ninth frame, Bellinger, spare working. A key pin, he reacts to knocking over the five pin. He had the two, four, and five pins standing. The head pin comes off the sideboard. Well, I watch the action of the head pin that, that bails Bellinger out here. Here the head pin goes to the sideboard. It works in behind the seven, knocks out the eight, and then creeps up and knocks out the five pin. Tremendous break, an easy spare to maintain a 21 pin lead in the match. All right. Well done. Red Carpet Celebrity Lions in Milwaukee. There were no 300 games this week. High game 299, Brad Bowling, Mark Roth, and Don Janello, whom you'll see later, each with 290s. 
The possibilities for Jeff Bellinger, if he can strike and spare on the next two shots, he will win the match. Anything less, he could lose, or we could have a tie. As you pointed out early, Bo, we see that often today, and how true. The 10 pin, the ball does not finish enough for Bellinger, and what he must do is make the 10 pin and throw a strike, and that way he guarantees himself at least a tie in the match. Voss still has a chance, no matter what happens, to tie this match or win it. Bellinger, Columbia, South Carolina. College champion. And Bo, uh, it's heartening to see some three million collegians now are competing in bowling competition. And there's a lot of scholarships available for bowling competition. In fact, both these players are tournament leader Don Dinello and Jeff Bellinger competed at the college level mm -hmm. in the same tournament. Right now, for Bellinger, he must get a strike to guarantee himself at least a tie. All right. He can set and watch. Tie assured. But up is Brian Voss, who uh, quickly checks the score sheet to make certain he knows what he has to do. Remember, he has that strike up in the ninth frame. It needs three strikes to tie. Bellinger sure put the punctuation mark on that strike he had in the 11th frame. Let's see if he put a little extra pressure on Boss, who must strike on each shot. Just when you think the pressure is insurmountable, they come through with shots like that. No timeouts for professional bowlers, no coach to call upon. Right now, it's your own natural ability. That was the best shot of the game for Brian Boss, but he must duplicate that two more times to end up in a tie. Talk about lonely sports. <laughs> this is one of them. First of 1986, as we're in our 21st year, first, 25th year, and Bo, of course, we've had roll-offs before, the two of us. Many roll-offs, and it's just extended play, as you explained uh, just a, a minute earlier, Chris. It'll be like the ninth and 10th frames. They will start all over. Bellinger would be up on the left-hand lane and bowl the ninth frame, but Voss must strike on this final shot of this game to go into a tie. Here comes the two-frame roll-off. And here's a replay of a big shot. Look at the intensity on that face. The reaction. Crowd joins him. And now we join live Jeff Bellinger. Bowling what we would call the ninth frame. First shot. Two eleven has brought about extended action, and Bellinger on the left lane leaves another ten. The identical shot that he had in the tenth frame when he needed a strike to lock up the match, he's praying again. Once again, ten pin. He's not beating himself though. He's keeping the ball in play. He's been perfect on his spares today. to spare in the two frame roll off first of two frames and now Brian Voss who put together three in a row to tie at 211 
There's his first shot in the rollout. Who has the advantage? Is it the player who just tied or the player that was sitting on the bench and that, would, that tied up the match, such as Bellinger? Let's see what Boss does on his first shot. Continuing that string is Brian Boss. Although the scoreboard says even, the boss definitely has the advantage. If we can project two more strikes, this being the 10th frame, he would shut out Bellinger. But one thing is so important, he cannot lose count with a strike up if he marks. situation for these two players is very simple. Strike and a spare and let's say another strike for Boss. As you see the four pin shot, he would have 40 in his ninth and 10th frame roll off. If Bellinger goes strike spare, we would have 40 again. A possible double tie. Punt. <laughs> <laughs> This is going to be a hard-earned victory and a disappointing loss. Well, you have to admire Brian Boss, how he has come back in this match. He left that 7-10 split on an apparent good hit. Then when Bellinger really put the pressure on him, he answered the bell, finished with four strikes in a row. Once again, he can put the pressure on Bellinger. If Boss strikes here, Bellinger would need two strikes to win. True grit. Two opens in the regulation play that struck out to tie. Mm. If Brian Boss had any critics about his ability to perform under pressure, they should, had, he answered the question in the last 10 minutes. Every ball in the last seven frames has been right in the strike zone. For Jeff Bellinger, he must strike on this ball or the match is over. Strike spare, we have another tie. Strike, strike. Bellinger's a winner. Anything less than a strike, Boss goes on to meet Roth. Boss is a winner. That's it. Pesky 10 pen. Oh, what a pity. What a loss for Jeff Bellinger seeking his first title. So Boss now will meet the great Mark Roth. That next. A professional bowler's tour, live from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. This ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by Miller Lite. For great taste, there's only one light beer. By AMF Angle Ball, the Winter Pro Tour's number one winner, three years in a row. The angle strikes again. And by Barbasol Shaving Cream, a great shave at a great price. We'll be back after these messages and a word from your local station. bottom of your screen you see matching 211s and an asterisk by Brian Voss's name in a two-frame roll-off, 40 to 39. He has earned the right to meet Mark Roth in our second game, live coverage from the Red Carpet Celebrity Lanes in the light championship. And uh, what a performer. He had seven strikes, regulation, and then two more in the roll-off. Voss shoots first. Gets them all. He seems to have solved the mystery of this championship here. The deep inside line on the left-hand lane, he trips out the four and down and in as he struck out against Bellinger on the right-hand lane. But here's the great Mark Roth. He knows what to do with a bowling ball. Ranks it into the pocket. The man who was top seated in the Quaker State Open, but along came a rookie named John Odrobinik to eliminate him. Mark Roth, the patented six-step delivery, the confident wrist action, the tremendous pivot step. Look at that hand straight through the ball. You want to learn a lesson? Watch Roth. He's not trying to overpower this right-hand lane. He's going what we call down and in. Watch him crank it up and torque it up on the left-hand lane and hook the ball to the pocket. Mark normally a 
fidgety type. A little bit more so, so today. He's really pumped up. He'd like to win today and then go on and win the light in North Olmsted, Ohio in three weeks. Said he needed that 50000 You're right. 50000 still available. The, the light mini slam, as we call it. David Ozio has one leg. A player today will leave with one leg. One of those two players will have a chance to pick up 50 grand in a couple of weeks. Well, a 310. David's seen almost everything today. Well, this is a good match game championship pair for the simple reason you have to be a shot maker to, to uh, hit lane 63 and 64. Throw some power, let it hook on the left-hand lane, depend on accuracy and a down-and-in shot on the right-hand lane brings out the best in the top pro bowlers. Boss to convert the 310 split. Tough break. Going by three pin. Just by a flicker. It looks like he's going to hit the three pin. The ball doesn't quite hit it. Defect into the 10. Boss trails by 22 pins. There's only two frames left, but he was way down in the first match. Winner of this game will meet Walter Ray Williams. We're close. Does count. Four time horseshoe pitching champion, but not in bowling. An eight now. Almost uh, unemotional reaction from Brian Boss. His concentration is so deep into it. He leaves the solid eight, an apparent good hit. But once again, it just reinforces what we stated at the top of the championship round. Carrying the pins on a consistent basis is the key to victory. Boss found the secret for seven or eight frames as he closed out Bellinger, but he's struggling against Roth. That methodically moves to the line, covers the eight pin to mark with a spare. Roth, you're with us right from the beginning. Um, open with a double. And looks on, sometimes has a problem uh, with concentration. Third frame. And now a 2-10. Once again, the 2-10 split. This is the split that plagued Jeff Bellinger in what Roth has to do is the same thing we said about Bellinger. Get the ball to the left of the two pin, drive it over into the ten pin area to convert the split. Well, he's done it before and seemingly hundreds of times on TV, converting the tough splits the 310. What has made Roth so great over the years is his ability to close out frames. He doesn't get many open frames. Chris, I've always said it as he puts a piece of tape in the thumb hole. He already has a reason for leaving the 310. That Roth has the best natural ability to bowl. Just God-given natural ability of any of the player that I've seen in the 25 years I've been involved with professional bowling. Imagine in, uh, there's his strategy, Bo. He has it figured out. 63 hooks, he's going to play in and crank it. 64, where he just converted that split is tight. He's going to throw it a little straighter. And we all need breaks in life. The seven going out late. The man that's making his 116th appearance in the top five. Mark Roth, who always said uh, what is... Uh, mother told him luck is a residue of design and there he proved a little bit of it but I think a lot of natural abilities a four takes out the seven avoids the seven ten split an easy spare thirty four year old Mark Roth with thirty two professional bowling association titles we're going to bowl through because we're running way behind our allotted time schedule we'll be back after this Make your mark with the Professional Rollers Tour. High rollers hope to strike it rich in a $150,000 shootout next Saturday on ABC Sports. Now going for the 6 7 10. Went all out. Brian Voss, Robert Wade. We roll through because we are way beyond our time limit. A strike in the fourth with a spare up for Voss. And now. Another open, his second of this match. He had two in his victory in overtime or a two-frame roll-off against Jeff Ballinger. Oh. 
call it eight. Not much you can do about it. We've seen the swishing 710, we saw the 10 pin, we've seen the solid eight. The only adjustment you can make, and I asked Mark what he was going to make, uh, what kind of adjustment he would make, he says just keep putting the ball out on the lane, a nice loft, don't try to hook it too much, and put it in a pocket. Easy spare for one of the great spare shooters of all time. Mark bowling today as he has throughout his career with a nagging injury. So we had an opportunity to ask him about his most recent one. A couple of weeks ago, I stuck real bad on the approach about two or three times during competition. And uh, I've had a, a wrap on my leg. It keeps it warm and uh, keeps the muscles loose. So I've been able to bowl the last couple of weeks with it. Same material that uh, deep sea divers use. It's black and sort of thick. And a four pin. Roth around the pocket on every shot except in the third frame. And here's the career victories of all the top professional bowlers. The great Earl Anthony Roth, only nine victories behind. Dick Weber, 27, Don Johnson. And a name probably the most underrated of all the great bowlers. Mm -hmm. The great Dick Ricker from in the state of Wisconsin. All right. Miss Sagan out on the tour. Very accomplished bowler and instructor as well. You see Brian Voss trailing by 31, and if you just join us in the first match of the afternoon, a 2 11 tie in the two frame roll off, Voss defeated Bellinger 40 to 39. And a 10. Everything bad happening to Brian Voss right now. Strike. As we said, there's not much you can do to adjust when the lane itself, as the uh, PBA lane maintenance people tell me, is tilted slightly down, uh, other than when the next time they resurface the lanes to level it out, it'll make the carry a little bit. And uh, there's always that happy thought of moving on to Peoria for the next <laughs> tournament, right, Nelson? Good paychecks for these fellows. And once yes. again, $50,000 potential bonus to the winner of this tournament if he can win at Cleveland or David Ozio, who already has one of the Miller victories. Voss in a must situation. This is where he started to turn it on with Jeff Bellinger. He was trailing in the match. He now trails by 31 pins. He has a possible 214 Roth going at a 205 pace. He says goodbye, waves goodbye, I should say, to the pins, and the ones he was waving to, four, seven, nine. What he had, the ball just cuts right through the, through the middle. He just has to throw at the four, seven pins and hope to bounce the one of them out and knock out the six pin. All right, again, repeating, we're running way over our allotted time schedule, which means we have to bowl through. Occasionally, as Mark Roth, who will be shooting, leads by 45, we'll be back. While we were away, three frames, three strikes. Roth um, striking in the seventh and eighth, and Voss now striking in the eighth frame, trailing by 55. Mark Roth's second strike on the left-hand lane. He trips out the four pin. He's now going at a 215 pace, but for Brian Voss, ninth frame, must strike or he cannot win the match. Not to be. Brian Voss, it just, I think that ninth and 10th frame roll-off against Bellinger just took so much out of him, Chris. I, he bowled well in the first frame, but then he's just not been able to put it together in the last eight frames. And he really is suffering that virus, has been battling it as he's bowled since Wednesday. So his second appearance this year, you know, a lot of credit, and it will not be his last this year. He's a tremendous athlete. And of course, Mark Roth, you, uh, you never know. When he really wants to bowl, he'll be on the show, believe me. Right there, he just quickly puts three together and has won the second match, and that means that he'll go against Walter Ray Williams in the semifinal. Today, Nelson Burton gives us some insights on how to make that troublesome two, four, five. So we're going to join Nelson now, and he's going to give us all the info on how to handle it all, Bo. Here he is. The 
Professional Bowlers Tour Tip of the Week is brought to you by Old Spice Stick Deodorant and Solid Antiperspirant. We give you 24-hour protection. The 2-4-5 combination is the most often left combination in the sport of bowling and is also the most often missed. The reason is simple. When you use the third arrow from the right-hand channel, as we recommend for head pin down spares, the angle that the ball comes into the 2-4-5 combination is often at such that it will chop off the 2-4 and leave the 5 pin. Today's bowling tip of the week will show you a way to convert this spare more reliably. What you have to do is move to the left side of the approach. I move to the exact same position on the approach that I used to make the 10 pin. But instead of using the third arrow from the right-hand channel, I use the third arrow from the left-hand channel. That cuts down the angle of attack and makes it much easier to avoid that evil chop by taking the 2, 4, and 5 and knocking them straight back. Watch this shot. There you have it. Instead of standing on the right-hand side of the approach, move to the left side. That increases your chances of making the 2-4-5 combination. Mark Roth, finishing third overall in the tournament, came out with a big 2.45, and Brian Voss, who won the first match against Bellinger in a roll-off 40 to 39, well, everything was against him. So now he will uh, leave with a check for $7,000 and 160 started earlier this week. The average needed to make the top 24, 2.05. The average to cash, uh, Chris, 201, 53 places. As you see some of the other finalists, Steve Wunderlich lost the 42nd game to Roth. Monticelli up there, powerful Mark Fay. Uh, rookie of the year, Tommy Kreitz, our great Butch Soper, the Green Machine. Brazo up there, U.S. Open champion David Houston. Kent Wagner finished 14th. His wife finished second this week in a women's pro tournament. Jim Stefanich, U.S. Open champion Cook. Big Bill Straub, Jimmy Certain, Bobby Knipple. Kaz Marzik, $1,800. Ted Hanna's out of his slump. Lenny Borish, Mats Carlson from Sweden. Pete Weber and Mike Bobia went in to fill in for Weber after Weber had a sore thumb and they split the prize money. Bobia got a little extra money, as you see, some Miller Brewing <laughs> product being put together in the background. All right, Michael, the Bowler of the Year 1985, so voted by the Bowling Writers Association of America. The trophy presented by Chicago Tribune's Jim Fitzgerald, president of that distinguished association. So it's congratulations to Indianapolis's Mike Albee, won over 200,000 last year, having his troubles this year, but he will be back. All right, we're ready now to go into that semifinal match. It's Mark Roth who shot a big 245 to Brian Voss's 169 that will lead off. He's going against Walter Ray Williams, who has yet to win in his fourth year as a PBA member. Mark in his 16th. And maybe the East Coast's most rabid New York Ranger hockey fan, Mark Roth, opening with a big strike. Now, here's our first look today. Walter Ray Williams, third TV appearance this year. And speaking of the two, four, five, and the eight, that's what Walter Ray will be faced with as a result of this shot. Walter Ray Williams using the whole approach, four-step delivery, just throws it a little bit hard on his opening shot, leaves that dinner bucket split, or spare, a difficult spare. You have to guard against the chop of the five pin and still carry out the eight. And disaster hits the world champion horseshoe pitcher right in the first frame. Mm. Walter Ray Williams, as you can see here, starting with an eight count. That has been his profile almost every time he's in the, in the championship round. He starts off the match poorly, he gets himself in trouble, and then he has to press to catch up. He told me today that he hoped he didn't do that, but once again, he's in trouble. By leaving the 3-6 for the man that has its best finish in second, but off to a very, very shaky start. Walter Ray playing that outside line that he likes so he can get some maximum carry, but he just can't seem to control the ball in the pocket. Throws the ball between the first and second arrows, but he's high and leaves the 3-6 spare. Another tough shot. And now a mark for Williams. Mark Roth. 
who opened with a strike, and a man who last night blazed through his final four games, 256, 203, 290, and 225, opened with a 245 and eliminating Brian Voss. When he knows the shot is good, he'll give it that little uh, leg-quaking shuffle. Cruiserweights, Nelson Burton Jr. An about Olympian Holyfield against Muti. Oh, what about? Holyfield, uh, Chris, uh, of all the Olympic fighters, do you think he has uh, as much potential as any of them? That's the one I like. Cruiserweight division, incidentally, has a weight limit of 195 pounds today. He's good. Mark has left a 10 pin on the left lane. Florida Derby also in today's ABC's Wide World of Sports, plus a live interview with the Commissioner of Baseball, Peter Uberroth. Jim Lampley will be questioning the Commissioner on baseball's drug issues. Roth for a pin that he never misses, the 10 pin, cross lane. Walter Ray Williams, cover uh, story on uh, Sports Illustrated, 1983, one of the great, if not the greatest, horseshoe pitching champion of all times, trying to make a living as a professional bowler. He says there's just not enough money in horseshoes, and he can win only $500 or $1,000 a week. So we have a 2-5 for the pitcher and the bowler. We just can't quite figure things out here this afternoon. Finish second overall out of 160. Here the pinfall, that is the tournament leader, Don Janello, will meet the winner of this match for the title. All right. Walter Ray, I believe, will have a pretty good line on the right-hand lane. This, if he's going to get back in the match, has got to be the lane that he makes the adjustment on. He's moving left on the approach. He looks down. This is a very important shot early in the match. He has left the 6-10. No way. He's trying to play uh, in golf. He's trying to say uh, it's a left-handed uh, break, and he's playing a right-handed <laughs> putt. There's just no way, Chris. He right, right through the heart, the 6'10". He has to move to a line around the third arrow on the left-hand lane. All right, continuing to mark with the spares as Mark Roth is leading by 25 pins. He'll be shooting next. We'll uh, bring you up to date when we return following this. Mark Freeland, nine wins without a loss. He continues his rise through the welterweight ranks when he takes on undefeated Richard Aguirre, live on ABC Sports Pro Boxing Series, tomorrow. This is Williams while we're away. Mark Roth, marking with Spare in the fourth, leaving a 10 pen, covering it then with a strike in the fifth. Here in the fifth frame, Williams, Spare. Huh. That's what he needs, aggressiveness, and not a negative thought in his. Hmm. And there's Mike Hart, who is the uh, director of sports marketing for the Miller Brewing Company, one of the super, super guys out here on the professional bowlers tour. Enjoys the game. And now, along with you, watching Walter Ray Williams. Big shot for Walter Ray. Has to strike. Oh, and he gets it. And it counted. A double for Walter Ray. Open with an open. So now, Roth's lead is 14 pins, can increase it to 24. Strike up, six frame, semifinal match. The 4-9 split. Once again, carry the problem with Roth, but he was a little softer on that shot. This whole game, Roth, strike, strike, solid 10, solid 10, strike. All of a sudden, he hits in this zone where he has to get the ball over next to the four pin, slide it into the nine. Roth, he's already made one split today, the 2-10. This is very similar. So things get closer and open for Mark Roth. First of the day, 116 through the sixth. Two pin lead. 
just not enough on the left side of the four pin to slide it into the nine. Frog going at 196, and boy, oh boy, what a beautiful game he's bowled so far, but nothing much to show for it. Let's see how he reacts to this back bad breaks he's had in the last three of the four frames. true champion that he is, bounces back with an important strike in the seventh frame. They'll be bowling through because we're way behind our allotted time schedule, but we'll bring you up to date after this. Make your mark with the Professional Bowlers Tour. High rollers hope to strike it rich in a $150,000 shootout next Saturday on ABC Sports. Ah, uh, battle rages here in, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin while we're away. Williams with a double, making it four in a row, and then Roth came back to double with a strike in the eighth frame. Eight pins separating the two. Seesaw battle as Roth cuts the lead of Walter Reyes down to eight. With that shot, he can retake the lead with a strike here in the ninth frame. Shirt, that is one. And a champion in horseshoe pitching the world over, Williams. Not yet in bowling, but the way he is strung four, looks like he may be emerging now. Foundation ninth coming up as Janello, the tournament leader, continues to stay loose and warm off to our right. Williams trailing by two can retake the lead ninth frame. Trying to keep the speed up. That's how he got there. He got four in a row by keeping the pins light. And what happens is he throws the ball a little bit harder on the right-hand lane. It bounces and doesn't quite finish. He leaves the two-seven baby split. A much easier split to convert than the three-ten baby split. A cross lane must get the ball left of the two-pin and let it bounce into the seven. Preparation complete. leads to success. Now, four pins separating these two as we move to that tenth frame after the split conversion. Walter Race has been so good from the fifth frame through the ninth frames. He threw the ball just a pinch hard in the ninth, but now here in the tenth, he needs two strikes to take the lead away from Roth. for the 10. 10th frame, he needed that strike. He, the match is not over, though. He has forced Mark Roth to convert a spare or a strike in the 10th frame if Walter Ray makes the 10 pin. Look at his technique. He just puts his ring finger in, one finger in the ball is another good method that some of the pros use to kill the shot and be accurate on spares. Very loose at 62 inches tall, 165 pounds could play a motion picture part of a riverboat gambler. Gundy. Mark Roth, and very true about Walter Ray, but Walter Ray, if he happens to lose this match, can look back to the first four frames where he missed a spear in the first frame, could not get lined up to the fifth frame, and now he trails Mark Roth by just four pins. Five pins. We're ready. Ah, uh, yes. Big 2-11. I think I have seen those numbers before. Our first match ending in a 2-11 tie between Voss and Bellinger. Voss winning at 40-39, two-frame roll-off. <laughs> Turning the screw, Mark Roth. And boy, he wants uh, the first leg on a mini slam. He's thinking 27,000 today, mm -hmm. 50,000 in Cleveland a few weeks down the line. What a tremendous shot in the 10th frame he just threw. You cannot coach that. He followed through to the right. He threw the ball a little harder. All instinct, but all money in the bank. So it's going to be an all East Coast final. Don Janello, the tournament leader, has been waiting in the wings. Likes the tournament leader spot will go against this great champion, Mark Roth. We'll return to Milwaukee, but first this. Three 
three matches by the boards in the first 40 to 39 and two frame roll off. Then Boss was eliminated by hot Mark Roth, who then took the measure of Walter Ray Williams with nine strikes, 236 to 211. Now, for 27 grand to the winner, it'll be Don Janello and Roth. To bring you up uh, to date live on two parts of today's wide world of sports, we're going to Lancaster, Pennsylvania now. Standing by is our colleague at ringside, Al Michaels. Thank you, Chris. And you're looking right now at Evander Holyfield involved in that controversy in L.A. at the Olympics. We'll detail it later, but he is unbeaten as a pro. And today he'll be taking on Chisanda Moody on Wide World. Right now, let's check in at Gulfstream Park in Florida with Jim McKay. We'll be coming to you live from Gulfstream Park with this year's running of the $500,000 Florida Derby. The favorites on this first step on the road to the uh, Kentucky Derby and Churchill Downs. The favorites are Snow Chief, an invader from California who has won a million dollars earlier in his career than any horse in history. Against him, Mogambo, Glow, and 13 other horses. Now back to you, Chris. Where it is much colder, Jim McKay, and thank you, Al Michaels. Bouncing around the country and now ready to bounce the ball out on the lane across the line, of course. Mark Roth, two victories. Janello, he likes that top spot, though, as a tournament leader. Janelle, very tough, has proven that in the top spot as he won the tournaments such as the King Louis Open, Long Island Open, and here's two, he always says Perrysville, Perrysburg, Ohio. We all have similarity between these two players. And originally from North Merrick, Long Island, and uh, Mark, of course, is a dyed-in-the-wool East Coaster. Uh, a shot we've seen before, especially the opening shot if a player is a bit tentative on the left-hand lane, it's the 6-10 spare. Janelle, a good spare shooter, is evidenced by being a tournament leader on a very tough condition. All right, Janello, marking with a spare. Now bowling out of Perrysburg, Ohio, lovely suburb of Toledo, where we'll be in four weeks for the PBA National Championship. And a man that, well, we've seen him want to win before, but not as much as today. 240 average in two games, Mark Roth. What tremendous wrist action Roth is putting on that ball, especially on the right-hand lane here. He's going almost straight through the ball, almost like a straight lift shot that uh, many amateurs would roll. But Roth getting maybe 12, 13 revolutions on the, on the ball is motivating those pins, but still fails to carry the 10. Lots of speed covering the 10 pin, and this is our championship match. The winner will receive 27,000 runner-up. 14. The light championship. 21st year that we've come to Milwaukee in our 25 years of the professional bowlers tour. And though you won here in 1972. When it used to be the Miller High Life tournament, now it's the light championship. A little bit of taste, a little bit lighter beer with a few less calories. <laughs> More money though. Four, six, seven. First time all day that Roth has been errant with his first ball. Right through the middle, four, six, seven. He must throw the ball hard at the four, seven, try to bounce it out, knock out the six. We've seen this shot three other times today. Huh. All right. mm. I've never seen that happen no. in a long time where you actually, what we call chop the four off the seven. Nothing going right for Roth in two frames. And if I was John Janelle, I would take advantage of that right now. Roth doesn't give you a second chance. There's Janello. He is um, wearing a wireless microphone as we replay the shot. I'll tell you what. I just think this fellow is such a great, great young player. Every time I see him out here bowling, his farm is almost impeccably perfect. He's a determined, good clutch player, and it just surprises me that we don't see him more often in a championship round. But with eight frames to go, he's got Roth down by 15 pins, 27,000 at stake. Get a break. Didn't? Well, perhaps he did get a break leaving only the 610. Once again, it's Ben Roth, and as you see Don Janelle looking down at the boards, counting how many boards should I move left on the lane. Remember the old golden rule, if you're missing left, 
as Roth is missing, uh, Janelle is missing, move left as Mary looks on. Janelle across lane is second, 6'10". Very smooth, sustained follow through. Mary showing very little emotion. John doesn't show much either. Let's Mark see what ha happens, Chris, to Roth. He's slowing down a little bit. He's been high a few shots. He must maintain that speed for eight more frames. Uh, between his last game and now, it did motion a bit to his leg that it perhaps is bothering him. Not getting that drive through on a pivot step mm -hmm. to keep the speed up. Roth, the second 4-9 split he has left today. The first time he did not convert it, knocking the four pin straight back. He has to slide it over into the nine. And here's a man whose right hand over the years has taken a pounding, and now his left leg today is two victories, a 240 average. Right now, he is down 26 pins to the tournament leader, Don Janello. Mark Roth uh, looks a little like he's, he's beat, but he is never beaten until the final game is over or final shot is over. He had a tremendous comeback mm -hmm. last night. The last four games went from 13th place to a chance to win the championship. He says, thank you very much. Finally into the pocket where he's been in his first two matches. This is the championship game, more of which you'll see following this break. For years, we've enjoyed this man, Bo, Leonard Goldstein, Senior Vice President of Sales, Miller Brewing Company. And we welcome to ABC Sports the new president, Dennis Swanson, his wife, Kathy, who have come in from New Canaan, Connecticut, to visit us at one of the cradles of bowling. A man that if you read Sports Illustrated magazine the last week has made a lot of great news for sports television in capital cities. Hold it. Oh yes. And um, look to the great spirit, didn't he? The first time the four pin has been tripped out on the right hand lane today, Don Janelle, tournament leader, at the most opportune time. Look, he's saying, hold it, watch his lips. Come on, Don, say it for me. Okay, you're not going to. But he still trips the four. Trails by 26 pins, fifth frame, needs a strike. Come on, ball, come on. Yes. Now he's fired up. On the King Louis Open last year from the top spot. Here he is against Mark Roth with a strike up. He'll be shooting in the fifth. If it was anybody but Mark Roth, I'd say count it out, give the money to Janelle. Janelle is a great champion, but he's going against the greatest in the game today. Mark seeking his 33rd title, Janelle his fifth. Mark 34, Janelle 28, just great, this past week. The great instinct player, Mark Roth, very similar to the Harry Smith, the great Harry Smith that so many years was a terror of the professional bowlers tour. Roth, fifth frame, has a double working coming up in the sixth, can cut the lead of Janelle down to 16. Needs a strike. Come on! Back in the match. 240 average in two games coming into this title event. The light championship, and you see the leaders by rounds, the great Jim Stefanich, and then Bellinger, then the man who will be shooting next, Don Janello. Janelle, with a great pocket percentage this week, has been almost 90% when everybody else has struggled. I see in my notes he was 91% in winning the 1983 and 85 King Louis championships. Break, leaving only the 6'10". Man who has won 14 and lost 10 in television appearances. Once again, the 6'10 spare to convert. Janelle left the 6'10 in the first, the 6'10 in the third, and the right-hand lane on the sixth frame, leaves the 6'10 again. He's feeling the pressure of Roth breathing down his throat. John Janello in 1983 missed a lot of action as he had a kidney removed, bounced back, and he looks uh, very good physically, doesn't he? Yes, he does, and he feels very strong and newlywed, and that graphic, he is four wins, no losses from the number one position, but right now, that could be in jeopardy if he doesn't keep striking against Mark Roth. Seventh frame. Mm 
Oh, ball up. Nice shot, Donnie. And the bucket on the left lane, two, four, five, eight. The man whose deceased father played baseball in the Dodger organization has left himself a difficult spare as his wife Mary looks on the two, four, five, eight. A conversion here to maintain the lead. With a little speed off the shot, beautifully done. But he didn't like the fact that he left it. But he marked the spare in the seventh. Now, here's a man that can tie it up. Three in a row, shooting in the seventh frame. Level even. What a tremendous shot to tie the match Roth, where everybody else has been leaving the 10 pin as you look at that guys. He's thinking 50,000, 27,000, 77,000. That's my kind of money. Carried the 10 out. The match is all even. Three frames left to determine the Miller Light Championship. Then there was the 3 6 7 10. And he did not like that shot for sure. The first time he was back in the match with Janelle, and he hands it right back. What Roth has to do, and he'll give it a good shot, is get the ball over in the 3-6 zone. Slide the 3-pin right here over into the 7-pin. Remember, he's already converted the 2-10. Folks, enjoy Mark Roth while you have him to watch. If you've never come out to see him bowl before, come out and watch this great natural talent. Let's see what effect that tremendous split conversion will have on Don Janelle, who now leads by four. Spare up. Six. I hit, but gets him. And I'll go down at the line on that one knee, hoping. Wonderful final match. Looking at the scoreboard, a mistake that he made one other time in his career where he threw an ill-fated five count on the final ball to give a championship to Jimmy Pritz back in 1984 will not make that mistake again. Ninth frame leads by four pins. Strike working can extend the lead over the great Roth to 14 with another strike. Left a single 10 pin on the left lane. Once again, the left-hand lane, as you mentioned, Chris, the ball breaking very sharply. He breaks up the 4-6-10 split, walks away with just an easy spare, the 10-pin, to maintain his lead going into the final frames. Coming back and getting it. Next week, we're at the Landmark Recreation Center in Peoria with a true value open. Good to see Ray Becker and his gang again. Then it's on to Kansas City for the King Louis, and then up to Cleveland for the second half or the third tournament in the Miller Lite Slam. But this one is yet to be decided. Come on! Solid. Mark Roth. Well, Chris, one of the great players of all times. What do you say he's going to do? Mark Roth needs a strike to take the lead. I'd have to put my money on that ball being in the 1-3 pocket. It's like I might put my money on Magambo in the Florida Derby later on ABC's Wide World of Sports and Holyfield. To take the lead. And I'm sure Jackie at home in Spring Lake Heights enjoying it with all of his fans. Sitting next to me, doing the statistician work, Mike Durbin just turned to me, and Mike is uh, one of the brilliant people in this sport. He just said to me, the greatest right there. Right now, he needs one strike to win championship number three and have a pop and another 50,000 bonus a couple weeks down the line. And there was a nine. Unbelievable, Chris. Of all the times that I have seen a bad break in a critical situation, Roth put it where he wanted it, solid in the pocket, he's shaking his head. 
What? What? You've got to watch his reaction. He knows it's solid. He says, I can't throw it any better. What happened? Nine pin. I can still lose the title. Janelle can win with a double in the 10th and 11th frames. 240 coming into this game after two matches. A 209 for Mark Roth. And now needs two strikes and six pins to win. Remember, oh, mm, the pressure. Remember how Janelle won the 1985 King Louis Championship, stood up there in the 10th frame, needed two strikes to win, pack it away, two of the great clutch players. Roth finished, Janelle two strikes for the title. Life in the fast lane for Janello. He needs one more strike and a six-pin count to take away the 1986 Miller Lite Championship and have a pop at that 50000 with David Ozio in Cleveland two weeks down the line. $13,000 difference here. Come on, baby, come on! The two strikes, now six pins. Six pins. Two great champions performing under pressure. $27,000, a pop at the 50. Chris, once again, you have to have a little empathy for Roth. He gave it his best go in the ninth and 10th and 11th frames. He was denied by another great champion, and Lady Luck left him on this final ball. That's the winner. All right. Those final frames again, showing the medal for professional bowlers. It is a 214 to 209 victory and a big one for Don Janello. We'll get a quick word from Janello. Mary, his wife, showing great appreciation for his talent. We'll be back after this. The Professional Bowlers Tour. This ABC Sports exclusive is being brought to you by Rich Smooth Meister Brown. The beer that only tastes expensive. By True Value Hardware Stores, we've got what it takes. And by Quaker State Motor Oil, in easy to pour and resealable plastic bottles. Olympian Evander Holyfield wants a cruiserweight title shot. First team is Peaches on the Moody. Plus the Florida Derby, all live on ABC's Wide World of Sports. Next. Rightfully, the smile on my right, the agony, registered on the face of our friend, great champion, nine pin. Wow. Well, all week long, I've been leaving champions, and today the nine pin stopped me, and, uh, you know, Don got up in the tent, took good shots, and I'm going to check him. You're still the greatest. Thank you, Chris. Okay. Mark Rock, Don Janello, congratulations to you and Mary. Leonard Goldstein, Senior uh, Vice President of Sales, Miller, with a check and a trophy, Leonard. On behalf of the Miller Brewing Company and Miller Lite, Don, on your fifth title, a check for $27,000 and this beautiful trophy. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'd just like to thank everybody here in Milwaukee. Uh, originally, I wasn't going to come here, and I decided to at the last second. Uh, Miller people treat us great every year, and I hope to come back next year and defend my title. You treated us to great bowling. Congratulations. Don Janelle is the winner. 214 to 209. Coming up next on ABC's Wide World of Sports, cruiserweight contender Evander Holyfield takes on Shisandra Muti, live from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And three-year-olds begin their run at the horse racing's Triple Crown in live coverage of the Florida Derby, the first major test of the 86th season. Next on ABC's Wide World of Sports. Travel arrangements made through in a promotional fee paid by United Airlines. Now serving 13 cities throughout Asia and the Pacific. United, a fresh breeze across the Pacific. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports. And once again, the champion of the light championship is Don Janello over Mark Roth in an exciting 214-209 victory. So long from Milwaukee.